Obviously, he's had a, uh, 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 he's been able to play some for us as a, as a freshman and as a sophomore and stepping into a bigger role here now. I guess my expectation for him is the same as it is for all guys is continue to uphold the standard of how we play. Um, and I think, you know, I thank the older guys for embracing Aaron, uh, helping him understand, you know, what we expect and how we do it. And I'm looking forward to a, a big year for him. I know he's excited. Um, he's practicing well and he's healthy. So. Uh, you know, just wait and see what, what happens when he hits the field. But I, I feel good about where he is right now in his preparation. We all saw Brian Allen on Kids Day last year, and he just put on a show. I mean, what, what are your expectations for him going into his third year here? Um, again, you know, when we talk about expectations. It's the same for all the guys. You know, I don't, I don't put anything on any guy that they can't handle. Uh, obviously, if he's going to be on the field for us, playing for us, he's going to, uh, you know, play team football, team, you know, play, play, uh, play the way that we've been playing, uphold the standard that we've created here uh, for a while. Uh, at Iowa football, but um, you know I don't have any set expectations for him, but just continue to improve, and he's done that. You know that that Kids Day performance last year, everybody likes to talk about it, but you know I look to think about Cam Wilson and his Kids Day performance, and Siaka Masakwai and his Kids Day performance, and you know <laughs> it's just that's one of those things. You know he's got he's got to have an opportunity right here to. Uh, you know, finally be consistent, and, and he's doing that. He's doing that right now. I guess a better question is, what do you see as like his upside? Um. You know, obviously the physical talent you see. I mean, he's he's big enough for the position. He's fast enough for the position. Um, you, you know, he's got some physical gifts that 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 fit in the Big Ten. Uh, now you got to put it together. You, know, you have to put it together, and, and I think he's starting to see what it takes to be a productive player uh, and not just a flash in the pan. So I'm I'm anxious to see him uh, this fall. Uh, he's going he's going to get an opportunity because he's practicing well. He's doing the right things, thinking the right way. What's the potential the ceiling, I should say, for the defensive line? I, I try not to listen to that stuff. I, I really don't, uh, you know, because I'm a guy that likes to look after the fact. I think uh, to be fair to everybody uh, in that room, this is the 2024 defensive line, and I can tell you what they're going to do. Or I'll look back on it after the season and say, you know, were we, were we successful? Did we achieve the goals that we want to achieve? Um, but, you know, our mantra right now is to build. Every day we're building. Um, we don't know what the season's going to hold for us. We don't know who's going to end up playing for us. Um, you know, I, I talk to the guys, especially the freshmen, because sometimes they come in and they're all wide-eyed and bushy-tailed. I, I, think, I think back to last year across the ball. Um, you know, you have Luke Lachey, you have Eric All. Uh, those guys go down with injury, and now you're forced to play with some guys that probably in August weren't expecting to play. So everybody in the room needs to prepare. Uh, prepare like they're going to play because you never know. You never know where your number's going to be called. Uh, Drew Campbell, here's a guy that comes in. I know you haven't seen too much of him on campus, but what was your assessment of him as a high school player and what attracted you guys to him? Um, I, obviously, I thought he was one of the top high school players in Iowa last year in the class of 2024. Um, we knew a lot about him and the family, which is important to us. Uh, you know, outside of the physical tools, it's good to know the foundation of where these kids come from. So, you know, felt good about that. And, you know, multi-sport athlete, all the things that we look for uh, in Iowa defensive linemen. So he's hit the ground running with us. Um, it, is an, it is an adjustment. I just talked to him today. It's like you're not getting ready to play Cedar Rapids Prairie. Uh, this is not high school football. And then he understands that, and I think he's got a, uh, a real good foundation and a sounding board, and his brother and his dad both were, um, you know, accomplished college football players. So he has an understanding of what needs to be done. Kelvin, what uh, with YA and Aaron, is that that defensive tackle combination, is that – what do you need from them this year? Because it doesn't seem like you've got the depth yet behind them. Is that fair to say? Um, I, I don't think that's I don't think that's fair to say because you never know. I mean, um, you know, I, I I don't read a lot of the stuff that guys write, but you know, every year we go into it, and it seems like on, from the outside looking in, there's always a question mark or an answer about what's behind. You know, and and guys step up. You know, if we put those guys out in the field, those guys I'm talking about Will Hubert, Jeff Bowie, uh, uh, Jeremiah Pittman, uh, Luke Gaffney, mm -hmm. if those guys get on the field, you can rest assured we have confidence in them to do what the, what needs to be done. Um, and then what we need from YA and what we need from Aaron is just, you know, continue to do what they have been doing, just do it better. Um, you know, I think, you know, the way that our defense is set up, the job that they do is, is not very, it's not glorified. Right. You know, people don't talk about it a lot. Uh, but, you know, when Jay Higgins is making a bunch of tackles, you know, those two guys are doing their job. <laughs> so, uh, you know, we'll, we'll just, that's what I expect from to do that. Continue to be outstanding leaders like they have been and uh, help mold the, the, the younger group. I think uh, when you look at 
the departure of Logan Lee and people talk about the holes and how we fill them defensively. Yeah. We, you know, we've been fortunate, um, you know, since since I've been a part of the defensive line, coaching the defensive line, we've hit the portal twice, you know, for two guys. You know, a lot of stuff gets filled internally and it's because of the old guys like Y8, it's because of the old guys like Aaron and, and Deontay and Ethan helping create that culture and bring those young guys along so when their numbers call, they're ready to go. With, with YA, like, again, it's not a glory position, but yeah. how good is he? Um, he's really good. Okay. He's, he, 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 he's really good. He's got a unique skill set because of his size. That's mm -hmm. going to be the first thing that people are going to yeah. see. But what you don't see is how intelligent he is. What you mm -hmm. don't see is how he understands our defense from a, from a cerebral level, mm -hmm. um, you know, to the point where he can turn around and question Jay, are you sure you want to do that? <laughs> um, so, and he's got the respect of everybody on the team and in the room. Those are the things that you don't see. Uh, but, you know, for to be as big as he is, as active as he is, and has played as much football for us, man, it's just, a, you know, you wish you could get a guy like that every year, mm -hmm. but, you know, but we'll get, we're going to make the best make the best use out of them with the time we have left. Mm -hmm. Coach, a little bit.